The following video series will provide many perspectives through the personal narratives of elders and recognized knowledge holders. These videos will also explore how the dispossession of land from indigenous peoples took place throughout what is now called Canada. This project is intended for educational use only. In our words. As indigenous peoples, our ways of knowing are strongly connected to our history, land, animals, and the sky. It is through our history that we will be guided into the future. Our words and our land are the truth. It means that you're wearing different shoes now, Migi Kidogoma, and your life is not the same, you know, like that. Now that's the way it was explained to me by my dad. He said, you know, he said when you're wearing you're not wearing your own shoes anymore. I already know that like, I'm not going to sleep because I know like the the deals that were made like you know Kandan Basidish I won't sleep because I'm thinking too much you know the deals that were made you know between the people and the native people you know it's not the right deals so that's the way my dad explained it. So he said, how can you sleep? He said, when you've been cheated out of everything. Of course, he really put the words in, you know. There's this contemporary scholarly narrative that we're all treaty people it's all based from the uh, the the wampum belt and it's it's spiraled into this this thing and then you have this other narrative that's saying hold on a minute we didn't cede and surrender the lands the treaties are talking about a cede and surrender why would our people fight in the war of 1812 for an independent homeland only to cede all of it to the british to use our language in order to understand what, what it really means to write a treaty. A treaty means a good even, a good even. Means whatever, whatever you have, you'll always retain that. You'll always have that. You'll have the land, you'll have the everything. you all always have that. But what we give you will be on top of what you have. A good even. That's what that means. The wampum treaties were very sacred because the wampum itself is a little animal that lives in the water. And they say that that little animal, it, it's like a water spirit. And all of its life, all it does is it collects medicine from the water and it stores it on its back. They take the shell of that, that little water spirit and they'd make their agreements with it. So it was very sacred. It took like a whole day for a woman to make one of these beads. And so there was the thought that our rights and everything that we speak about 
through these wampums comes from the bottom of the ocean floor right to the the sky world and so those those natural laws come from that that animal that's crawling across the bottom of the floor when they say a belt it's not a belt like this it's a belt that you put on your head when you're carrying your load and so the wampum belt symbolized that belt that went here and so each nation was carrying the other and so when the British came here, that was the mindset that they ran into with the Indigenous people, that something was very sacred about an agreement. The dish with one spoon, the responsibility that came with that belt, where everybody that was in that um, wampum, where we shared all the, the land and the resources, but we all equally shared with that, that spoon. It was a treaty between the Anishinaabek and the Haudenosaunee, and other nations as well were involved. And what it talked about was how they're going to live together in peace and harmony, and how they're both going to be able to eat off the same dish using one spoon. So for example, this is my rabbit. And then the Métis will say, this is my rabbit. And then the Ojibwe will say, well, it's my rabbit. And then you have everybody saying, this is my rabbit. And they all believe they have a right to that rabbit. Poor rabbit. And so the rights-based agenda that these organizations have are really detrimental to our relationships with each other and our way of life on the land, which is what the Dish With One Spoon talks about. It's not a, it's not a rights-based relationship or agenda, but it's a responsibility-based friendship that we have with each other. It goes back to the beginning of what they refer to as Indian time. Indian time is even before the sun rises. That's true Indian time. And that is where that color purple comes in. Once you've seen a sunrise, you will always experience that. And it also marks the beginning of life. And that's why that purple remains there. And the white represents that purity of how we are as well within spirit. People like to call it a koswonta, but koswonta only translates, it's just something that's laid down or a belt. But when you hold it up, and the term is called yoha deini, Yoha Dene talks about this perfect balanced path there. One, one side represents the spirit, the other side represents the living. And it is a human law that you remain who you are. Or if you are trying to retrace that step, get to know who you are before you live in somebody else's boat. And that it has different meanings, but either side represents again of that respect and that truth and that righteousness in there again. But a common understanding is that they say it's called a goswonta. But yoha deini is the closest that we can to call it the two perfect paths. This is who we are, regardless if you are an Anishinaabe or a Honodoshone. But when you pre uh, present it, that's the way you present it, that they stay over there. But it doesn't mean that we can't hold hands and walk together down this river of life. <laughs>